Okay, we'll call the meeting to order and start with the pledge. Christina, do the roll call, please. Fish? Here. Johnson? Here. Cole? Here. Lawrence? Here. Marcel? Here. Steen? Here. Mayor Buck? Here. All right, we'll look at the, uh, the agenda. We do have uh, one change on under water and sewer. Um, 2B has been removed from the agenda. Is that correct? <clears throat> Any other additions or corrections to the agenda? I'll look for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We have the minutes from the uh, October 17 and October 21 meetings. Um, any additions or corrections? Otherwise, we'll look for a motion on that. Motion a second to approve the minutes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We have the claims on uh, pages 11 and 12. I think we've had a chance to look them over. I'll move to approve. Second. Motion a second to approve the claims. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, consent calendar, we have one wage adjustment. Um, I'll look for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve the consent calendar. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion carries. Visitors and timed items. This is an opportunity for anybody that would like to uh, address the council on any particular issue, whether it's on the agenda or not on the agenda. Um, if it's on the agenda, you might want to wait until we get to it, but you certainly can do it now. So we ask you to step up, give your name and address. And we do limit it to five minutes. Do we have anybody that would like to address the council? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Public hearing. We have uh, several liquor licenses uh, to be renewed. Um, no issues with any of them? Correct. No violations. Then, I'll move to approve. Second. Motion a second to approve the liquor license. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, Brandon Volunteer and Fire Department. We have an opportunity to have a discussion. Council members, my name is Josh. I'm with the Brandon Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, many of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, as you know, our team consists of 24 volunteers running 500 plus calls a year. I'm here tonight at the request of the stakeholders meeting that was held on October 10th. The stakeholders meeting was requested by the Brandon City Council to explore funding options for the volunteer department. After we had submitted a request for funding increase of $275,000 from the municipality of Brandon, with whom we currently are contracted through the year of 2024. Uh, that said, contract has not been received for the year of 2025. The reason for our funding increase began six years ago when this city council in this room asked our team to start exploring options uh, when we may need to start paying staff. Our team started running ads, uh, making promo videos, did commercials, started uh, open houses, allowing medical members, giving incentives for running calls, and coming to a point of no longer being able to kick this can down the road any further. The proposed increase last spring was an option to start getting some of those other members to take on-call shifts to begin to guarantee staff in town and available at all times and to take some of the burden off of the majority of our members. As mentioned, with our call volume increasing each year, volunteers are scarce and multiple hours of training and high-stress profession, I present to you our team that is here today at the back of the room that trains hard, leads our firefighters, commits thousands of hours, and answers the call. I've literally begged all of them, and they can attest to that, to stay as we have found that we might receive a handful of applicants each year, but merely 
one in five will become a member and a firefighter as they begin to see how much time is needed to train for such a career as this. Um, and then they start to see what our call volume is and how busy we are. These new recruits begin to see, or to see what the sacrifice will be, time away from kids, spouse, events, and even professions that they provide their family's income with. Our volunteer men and women answer their pages, pagers from their homes at 3 a.m. to help the residents of Brandon in need for assistance. Uh, they walk out of their meetings of their full-time jobs at 10 a.m. to take out a high, or to fight a house fire. They miss a Thanksgiving meal to stop grass fires from burning down an acreage and miss a birthday party to pull a driver from a cold car on the interstate in the middle of the freezing winter. And all of this with no more than a thank you, a tumbler, and a t-shirt. And we would do it all again tomorrow because somebody has to answer the call and care for the people who call 911, and that's our team. But this team will not be around forever. The stress, burnout, and increase in calls has worn our team and many other volunteer organizations across the country. Again, this leads us to our last funding request in the spring. As we noted, we presented to the council, rep our council representative in March and subsequently in June, July, and August with briefings, meetings, city staff, and council member meetings. We hope this would give us a three-year bridge uh, while we explored some next steps for our department's future. The funding request was declined by the brand municipality and subsequently the stakeholder group was formed at the request of Dave Call and some of the other members. At the meeting of the stakeholders, which included Brandon City Administrator, Council Members, Township Board Supervisors, a City Resident, along with our team of uh, Brandon Fire Leadership. Uh, the Fire District, at that uh, stakeholder meeting, the Fire Department was advised to pursue what is called a Fire District. Safe to, the State of South Dakota defines this as a rural fire district. The district falls under special districts in the eyes of the state of South Dakota, and upon a public vote, a tax levy is, to, is set where a tax is placed on the residents, assessed property value, and applied to all those inside the lines that have been submitted to the county commissioners. The levy would be collected by the county and redirected straight to the fire district. In this case, the city of Brandon and the township of Brandon would be our levy line, as that's whom we currently cover. The type of district levy has never been done in a city this size in the state of South Dakota. Our team you see here today of veteran firefighters has not only uh, researched this topic, but has been a part of fire districts and towns that they previously lived in. But the fact that we have found that this fire district is an option for Brandon also causes us major hesitation because of the research and the history of some of the guys that have been in these districts. A special district is unable to raise its tax levy after it has been set. I want to repeat, the levy cannot be raised later. We have been warned that the rate of growth does not keep up with the need of funding in fire districts and has uh, torpedoed some fire districts across the state. That being said, the increase in city size will come with its, with its own growth uh, issues, as you all well know. The forms you have in front of you show the tax implications, timelines, and budgets that we would submit to the county commissioners for approval. As you see, this budget merely gets us two staff 24 hours a day. The National Fire Protection Agency, the NFPA, would not deem that a suitable number of engine company members to fight a fire. They would suggest us that we would be closer to 16 to 18 firefighters per structure fire. With the city's growth, we have looked at the other comparable city suburbs, much like ours. We would predict that when we hit 10,000 residents, we should have a minimum of three staff on 24 hours a day with a total roster of nine people. As you know, our city is currently larger than that. We can predict that at 15,000 residents, based on how other suburban cities have grown, we will need a roster of 12 members that can start to follow the NFPA, the National Fire Protection Agency guidelines, to staff a full engine company of four men. But as stated above, when we look to add a paid firefighter each time, we cannot increase the levy just to add a new firefighter. The tax levy has been set. So every time we wanna add three more firefighters, one per shift, and at the advisement of Brian Reed and the three hundred or the hundred thousand dollar tab per full time uh, staff member, we would need to add another three hundred thousand dollars to the budget and would be unable to increase that tax. So far, and that's uh, with the papers you have. I haven't even really touched on paid chiefs, assistant chiefs, or lastly, a station. Yes, sir. The th the three that I emailed right to you. The the three that I emailed to you. Uh, you you asked me to, to to send them to you, so I apologize. We'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. 
Um, our department for a few years now has spoken for the need of a second station as we are not the ma majority owner of the station that we currently live in. Uh, the current station we occupy is, is uh, un and our current station is currently unable to accommodate 24 hour staff and would need a major renovation to host full time staff if we were allowed to stay and or were we requested to depart by the majority owner, which would be the city of Brandon. Continue future plans have brought us to the conversation of other suburban cities and we would look to have two, possibly three stations and 18 to 20 full time staff in the next 10 to 15 years with projected city growth. At that point, we would still rely on volunteers to come help us with fires, car, accidents, car accidents, and any personnel heavy calls. As I said earlier, the 16 is what's, re what's requested by the National Fire Protection Agency to fight a structure fire. These are things that we have researched and found to be true of our fire department that serves this community and strives to serve the residents at the level that they deserve. Uh, in conclusion, we, f we informed all parties of the stakeholders meeting, which was the township and the city council members um, to pursue a fire district the Brandon Fire Department would have to file an application to create a fire district to the County Commission and then to encompass areas uh, would need to pass a resolution to move forward to a public vote uh, so each place the township and the city council would have to pass said resolution um, the second thing that we spoke to about the at the stakeholders meeting was that uh, we urge you all to consider that if that vote would pay, fail, what would you do? Uh, the Brandon Volunteer Fire Department is burning it at both ends right now, and we provide, um, and to provide the right support for our community and the residents that live here, the Volunteer Department is going to need some help. Um, we're starting to run out of options. With, uh, I hope this information helps. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'll field those now. I guess first, you know, Josh, thank you for that information. Honestly, we, we didn't get a chance to look at any, any of your information as of yet, so I wish we would have had a, had a little bit of an opportunity so we could have seen, seen a little bit of that, but we're just ingesting this, ingesting a little bit of this now. I think more than anything, seeing the men in the back, back of the room, I think we all appreciate what the fire department does for us and we understand the importance of this. Um, but I think also too, at the same time, that's kind of what the stakeholder, um, committee that we put together hoping that we can all come to a resolution to make something happen knowing that something needs to be done here in the in the in the near future well and as as stated this the stakeholder group uh advised that this is the direction that they would like to go they said that the Brandon fire department should pursue this so we do have another meeting we do have another meeting that we're planning on that's still on for that's correct. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Is that a meeting that's open to the public or not? It's a study group. Okay, well, Josh, thank you, and thank all the volunteers. It's, it's, a, it's a terrific thing that you guys do, and it doesn't go unnoticed or unappreciated. Thank you for what you do, and let's uh, let the uh, study group do their job and come back with the uh, you know with a solid plan. So, okay. Dave, you're on there, right? Yeah. And Ke is it Kevin? And Kevin. And Kevin? Okay. 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 Great. Thanks. It's uh, three short forms. Um, the tax implications for everyone's residence is in that form um, for the tax levy, as well as a uh, budget that would come from said tax levy and a timeline for people to look at. It's pretty short. Okay. Thanks again. Okay. Okay, we'll move on. We don't have any other old business. Uh, Committee reports, the golf course, we've got a resolution 33-24 setting the 2025 rates. We've had some discussion on this. Uh, this is what uh, the golf course proposed at the last council meeting uh, as comparing uh, when comparing them to other golf courses in the area. I'll look for a motion. We moved up 
Motion and a second to approve re resolution 3324, setting the 25 golf rates. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Parks and Rec, we've got the uh, work report. Um, any comments? So, so I understand now that we have a petition file. There will be nothing happening at Aspen Park this summer. Correct. We've got it down as of this evening. Okay. Uh, public safety, police report, page 21 to 23. Uh, the inspection report, um, 34 single-family homes so far this year. That's a, a nice bump, but... Uh, You know, showing good progress. Uh, administration. First reading of ordinance uh, 715, supplemental budget. Yep, uh, just kind of some year end cleanup. Um, the first one is the revolving loan fund. We did loan out to a business in that, so that's just adjusting the budget to recognize that and some revenue that's coming in from that already. The bid and the TIF is um, kind of finalizing those funds and closing them out. So out um, as those were all um, finalized. TIF 5 and TIF 6, um, those have been finalized with the developers. Um, we received the proper documentation on that, so they've been accepted and approved. So this approves the payment to them. Their TIFs are always hard to predict on the first and second year, well, year one through five, really. Um, so it's just kind of, it's um, amending the budget to get up to actuals on what it will pay out and what we're getting. Nothing major. All right, I'll look for a motion. Second. Motion and second to approve uh, ordinance 715. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, here's the Aspen Park uh, petition. Yes, as of late Friday, I did uh, um, get all of the signatures that were needed for the Aspen Park petition. The petition states, and it's up there, but the petition itself, what the voter signed is for the city to stop the construction of Aspen Park Road and parking lot improvements projects and to require the city to construct East Ironwood from Sioux Boulevard to the west boundary of Aspen Park, overturning the city council's October 7, 2024 motion. So once a petition is received, the governing body shall submit the question to the electors and the next annual municipal election or the next general election can't do the general election. There is also an option to expedite it and do a special election. I don't recommend that just because it's going into December, it's over the holidays, um, it's kind of a tight timeline. Um, you deal with weather then more. Um, it's also a harder time to get election board because it's in the winter and you have a lot of snowbirds. So my recommendation is to move it, is to have it at the annual election, which would be April 8, 2025. Also, the South Dakota law states that pending the election, the governor, governing body may take no action with respect to the subject matter of the petition. So, any questions? Basically, what this means is nothing will happen. Correct. In 25, and depending on whether we have budget for years beyond that. Construction, we don't anticipate construction to happen in 25 after the after the vote is when we proceed with whichever option with design and finalizing design and fin finalizing any steps that need to be taken. That's most likely what will happen in 25. So Christina, this is on the ballot. So is it just a simple majority Correct. vote? So Correct. 50, okay. So what does the money do that we've already got budgeted for it? Just roll that over or? Stays in the budget. It stays right, in the it's just budgeted money, so it's budgeted there. Um, it would just, whatever the decision is in April, we would, I mean, we still may have some expenditures next year depending on, on what route it goes. And then obviously we would do the 26 budget after the election, so therefore we'd put it in the 26 budget. Because it's just sitting in our cash reserve. Right. We're just going to so pull out a cash right. reserve. Next yeah. year's CIP will determine whether we do something in 26. Correct. Well, 
next year's vote will determine what you do in 26. I see, but whether there's money or not is in the CAP. Well, you once the election takes place, it'll direct the city which project the voters would like to do, and then we can that'll happen if we can afford CAP. it. Yes, and, and once again, even after direction of the electors, let's say uh, they want to do uh, the, the the petition succeeded, you know, they want to proceed with Aspen Park Road. That's estimated to be about two point nine four million, I think, right at the moment. Let's say the bid comes in at five. The city council can still reject. Ironwood. Ironwood's at 2.97. If it comes in at 5 million, the city council can still reject that bid. And as far as the fund balance, it's in the fund balance right at the moment. We don't have any projects scheduled to, to spend it on at this point in time. But that may change as we go to 2025 CIP for which we'll do a new planning. Right. right. So we'll do something in 26 if we have the money. So, as far as tonight, the council will need to set uh, or call for an election. Uh, Christina said you can either do it at the next municipal election, which is April 8th, 2025, or your selected date, since you're in the, in the memo there, is December 17th, 24th through 31st, I think, January yeah, 7th. Yeah, and it's January 7th. So, uh, we don't recommend the 24th or the 31st of December at all. <laughs> but one advantage to doing a early election would be get the bid moving I, at a better time. Um, I think you're still pushing that. You're going to push it. You're going to, if you do the special election on December 17th, Ironwood still needs some work. We're about 90% done on plan, so it's still going to take a while to get that ready to go. So either project, if it was approved on December 7th, we're still looking at isn't the greatest time to bid a project. And the other thing is, if we're going to do Aspen Park Road, it's going to take quite a bit of uh, uh, cooperation with the associations to try to minimize any of that uh, opposition. So, so we're, staff is recommending we do it at the next municipal election date. I'll make that motion. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, streets. Kevin, are you still on? Are you a yay vote on that? I'm a yay vote. Okay. Just clarifying. Thanks. Streets. Got the work report on page 32. And exit 406 project. We have a change order. Uh, this change order is for a little over $12,000. Um, when we were working through the design portion of this, we had as built in there that showed a water bell in one location. And when we went out there, there was no water valve there. So that's what this change order is, is to add in a water valve. I move to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve change order number one. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And we got pay application number three. And just to note that the contractor is almost done with our utility. They have a little bit of work to do in the spring, but otherwise our portion of the project is complete. I'll look for a motion on pay app number three. I make that a motion also approved. Motion and second to approve. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion carries. All right, water and sewer. The Sioux Falls Force Main Project, uh, pay application one through four. So this pay application is a little bit different just because this is a project with the city of Sioux Falls. It's really their project. So 
we work through the pay applications together, and then they approve them, pay them, and then we reimburse the city of Sioux Falls. So they just sent us the invoice for the first four pay applications. Motion and second to approve pay application one through four, pages 38 to 53. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, the access uh, easement and addendum. So we currently have an existing easement where our line is going through and we already paid them for that. But we didn't have an access easement to our easement. So that's what this is. It's an access easement. And then we had to pay them for that as well. So that's the amendment to the easement. Just paperwork. I'll look for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Westview Estate drainage. Purchase uh, agreement. We are working on bidding out this project for cleaning out this drainage way or maintaining this drainage way. Um, currently, we don't own all of the property, so this developer is dedicating this track to us for a dollar. So that's what this purchase agreement is, and then we'll set up the closing. Okay, I'll look for a motion. Move to approve. Second. A motion and second to approve purchase agreement. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, agreement with Chestnut Ridge Development. The Chestnut Ridge Development is would like to plat a parcel. Um, the east side trunk, as we all know, isn't done yet. So we're going to have a cost recovery on the east side trunk. And in order to plat a parcel, we want all of the associated fees paid prior to approving the plat. So this agreement will allow um, the developer to pay uh, the cost for the parcel to be platted, which the total co total cost recovers $123,209.62. They want to plat off uh, a smaller chunk, so it's about $55,000 and some change. This is just saying, hey, uh, developer, you will pay us so we can approve the plat. Recommended passed by the correct staff. Yep. I'll look for a motion. Move to approve. Second. Motion second to approve the agreement with uh, Chestnut Ridge Development. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion carries. No new business, and I don't think we have a need for an executive session. So I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Move to approve. Second. Motion second to, to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion carries.